Welcome to our lecture online. One of the viewers posed a very interesting question. I thought it was so unique that I thought, let's do a video on it. So here's the question. The question read as follows. Rob travels from point A to point B along a 200 kilometer route in three hours less than Jim, who travels from point A to point B along a 240 kilometer route. The difference in their speeds is 10 kilometers per hour. Find their speeds and the time each took to get to B. Wow. So there are two unknowns. You don't know how long each of them took in time, and you don't know what their speeds are. So we're going to end up with two equations, that's for sure. But how do we approach that? Well, let's make a diagram. So here we have point A, and we have point B. And we have a shorter route and a longer route. And so Rob took the shorter route, Jim took the longer route. The shorter route is 200 kilometers, and the longer route is 240 kilometers. Okay. Now, since we have two variables, we need to define them. So let V equals the speed of Jim. And let T equals the time like this, the time of Jim. And so we are going to use the equation where distance equals velocity times time. So for Jim, what would that look like? Well, distance would be 240 kilometers is equal to the velocity, which is for Jim is V, and the time is T, like that. So now we do the same for Rob. So what would be the speed of Rob? We know that the difference of their speeds is 10 kilometers per hour, but is Rob going faster or slower? Well, since Rob takes three hours less, even though he's not taking that much shorter of a route, my assumption is that Rob is the faster one of the two. Now, it could be wrong, and if we're wrong, we'll figure that out, but I'm going to assume that Rob is faster. So if that's the case, by 10 kilometers per hour, then means that for Rob, a V plus 10, because he's going 10 kilometers per hour faster, is equal to the speed of Rob. And the time, well, it takes three hours less, so T minus three is equal to the time for Rob. And so then the equation D equals V times T becomes 200 is equal to velocity, which is V plus 10, times the time, which is t minus 3. And now we have two equations, this one right here and this one right here that we have to solve simultaneously. So what we need to do now is take this equation and solve it for one of the two variables. So let's solve it for t. t is 240 over v, or v is 240 over t, doesn't matter. Either way, um, well, let's solve it for v. So this one, I'm going to solve that for V, so I can write that V is equal to 240 divided by T. All right, and that then gets plugged into this equation right here. And when we do that, the equation now will look as follows. Now we have 200 times, oh, not times, there's an equal sign there, equals, uh, we have V, which is now 240 over T, 240 over T, plus 10, and then here we have t minus 3. So to get rid of the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by t. So I'm going to multiply the left side by t, and I'm going to multiply the right side by t. Now notice that since this is a product, yeah, I could do that, that, okay? But since we have a product here, I can only multiply the t by one of them, not by both. Only if there was a plus or minus sign, we'd have to multiply the t by both there. So it's only going to be t times this to get rid of that denominator. So on the left side, we get 200t is equal to t times t, that cancels out, so we get 240 plus 10t, we still have the brackets there, parentheses, times t minus 3, like that. And now I can multiply that out and I will end up with a quadratic equation. So I get 200t 
is equal to 240 times that, that would be 240t. 240 times that, that would be minus 720. This times this gives me plus 10t squared, and this times this gives me minus 30t. So now I'm going to move everything over to one side, so 0 equals the 10t squared term. 240 minus 200, that would be 40 minus 30, that would be plus 10t, and I'm minus 720. And notice I can divide by 10, so I get 0 equals t squared plus t minus 72, and I can probably factor that. Let's see if that's factorable. t and t, two numbers when I multiply get minus 72, and one is one bigger than the other. 9 and 8. 9 times 8 is 72, so plus 9 and negative 8, which means that t is equal to minus 9, or t is equal to plus 8. Because after all, if I multiply two numbers together and then I put 0, that means that t plus 9 equals 0, or t minus 8 equals 0, so from that I end up with t equals negative 9, or t equals 8. This is the only plausible answer, you can't have negative time, so t must be 8. So now let's see if we can solve the problem. So first of all, t is the time of Jim, so this is equal to 8 hours. So Jim will be on, its, on his way for 8 hours, and v can be found by taking 240 divided by 8, which is equal to 30, that means the speed of Jim is equal to 30, kilometers per hour. And notice 30 times 8 is 240, that gives me a route of 240 kilometers. What about Rob? Well, V plus 10 is the speed of Rob, so 30 plus 10 is equal to 40 kilometers per hour. And the time for Rob would be 8 minus 3 or 5 hours. And 5 times 40 is indeed 200 kilometers for the shorter route. So, the speed of gym and the time of gym is 30 kilometers per hour and 8 hours, and for Rob, the speed is 40 kilometers per hour and the time is 5 hours. So it is indeed a very interesting problem, but it can be done by setting up the two equations, and that is how it's done. That's a really good question. What if we made the wrong assumption, and what if we thought that Jim was faster? Hmm. It could be a very mountainous road. <laughs> that is true. It could be traveling really slow. Who knows? Um, should I try to do it that way and see what happens? Next problem. Next problem. Let's try it. Let's say we make the other assumption and see what would happen. I think that's a good idea. All right, let's do that.